I'm Scott Tibbles with the Investing News Network, and I'm here today at the Sprott Natural Resource Symposium in Vancouver. Joining me now is Chairman of Pan American Silver and Equinox Gold, Ross Beatty. Thanks for joining me, Ross. My pleasure. So you've just finished your talk, I Love Gold Equities. Can you tell me a little bit about what you spoke about? Sure. Uh, how do I start? Well, I think I'll start at the beginning. Uh, I've had a long career in the mining industry, and my first company was a gold mining company. Uh, that I had, uh, I built from 1985 to 1994 and sold it, and it was a happy ending for all shareholders. Uh, we had a couple of producing gold mines and a big gold discovery. Uh, and that's really when I really became uh, in love with gold. Uh, now, since then, between then and now, I've had a whole bunch of other companies, uh, silver, uh, lots of copper companies. And, and yet, uh, last year, I, I also had a clean energy company that I ran for about nine years called uh, Altera Power. And I just sold that this year in February. Mm -hmm. And after having sold that main business of mine, I, I sort of tried to figure out what do I do next and do I have another company in me and what should it be? And I decided I would build, uh, try to build a big gold mining company because I do love gold. Uh, I love it for all kinds of reasons. And I thought it would be a relatively straightforward matter to take uh, a couple of assets, put them together, and then build this new company, and uh, very much uh, named after my first company, uh, Equinox Gold, is something that I probably will bookend my career on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I, I have great ambitions for it. Um, I love gold for all kinds of reasons that maybe we can get into, but, uh, but that's what I'm doing now. Well, during, during your chat, you said that you were trying to build Equinox Gold quickly. I guess you might have just answered the question, but why the rush? Yeah, uh, I'm a very impatient person, generally speaking. I, I don't want to wait another 10 years to do this. And I think I can do it more quickly, and I want to take advantage of today's weak marketing goal. Because when you're trying to build something, it's when, you know, if you're trying to do it through a merger and acquisition strategy, which really is what we're doing, uh, which is the way to do it quickly, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to be buying other companies or other businesses when the price of the commodity is low and when the market's beat up, which is right now. It's a buyer's market right now. We're buyers. We want to try to accumulate uh, several projects together into one company, create a mid-tier or even larger gold producer that pays great dividends, has a tremendous capital gain potential through re-rating, and then to the extent that the gold price runs, it's going to be, that's going to be the real kicker for, for shareholders, so for all those reasons. And, and speaking of the gold price, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of theories around, but why, why is gold down at the moment? What is, what's your take? Gold is just inversely correlated to the U.S. dollar. Strong U.S. dollar, weak gold, and almost every other metal. Uh, the reverse is true, too. Gold's not, uh, the U.S. dollar is not going to stay high forever. It's going to crack. When it cracks, gold's going to have another wonderful run. Plus, gold has all kinds of other good demand and supply fundamentals. So I'm quite uh, bullish on gold's prospects uh, in the medium term. Of course, gold, like all metals, is cyclical. It will have runs. It'll have corrections. That's the way metals are. Uh, right now, we're in a, we're in a down cycle. Uh, it's going to turn. And when it has its next run, I want to be ready with Equinox Gold with a fabulous asset base that gives investors great leverage to higher prices. So we'll be the go-to stock for institutional and retail investors. Great. And so moving to another conference. So last month, you attended the uh, Resources for Future Generations conference right. in Vancouver as well. You spoke a lot about uh, the future. Now, you said that um, the numbers around growth of economy and growth of economies and debt in the world are unsustainable. Yep. And you said that it's time to recognize that we cannot grow like we have to date and to build a new economy based on permanence. Can you just talk a little bit about how mining fits into that? Yeah. Uh, well, it, it really doesn't, to be perfectly honest. Uh, the, the future has to be a world well, where there is a circular economy, where we consume less, we conserve more, we have fewer mines, fewer developments, and all that. So th there's no great, quite frankly, uh, correlation between what I'm doing in the mining business and what I'm doing on the, on the green side, you could say, yeah. or on the sustainability side. But don't shoot the messenger. Uh, just uh, accept that there's a certain amount of, uh, of uh, 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 you could say, confusion, or you could say, um, uh, 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 Comfortable with ambiguity is how other people have put my, my own view of things. 
I'm firmly of the view that our world is unsustainable. What we're doing now is unsustainable. We are on a growth. We are obsessed with growth. You cannot continue to grow forever in a, in a finite world. And we're hitting limits all over the place. Mm -hmm. Lots of people know that. Lots of people are doing good things about it. We are moving the needle to lower growth, less consumption. It's super critical because otherwise we're not going to have a world in, in for my kids and their kids and their kids. It's just not going to happen. Uh, mine is part of that. I mean, to be perfectly honest, we need mines, we need, uh, we need metals to, to do any kind of industrial society, uh, whether it's a slow growth or a rapid growth economy, um, uh, we need metals, uh, particularly metals that fuel the transition, the transition to uh, the electrical revolution that's going on right now where we're moving from uh, fossil fuel-based energy to renewable energy, the digital revolution, which is, of course, part of the sustainability answer, mm -hmm. uh, which is full of metal use. And we, you know, so metals are all part of that, but we just don't need to consume them like we're doing right now. So I see a future where there will be less growth for most metals, and, uh, and it will be more. It'll be better for longer, even though it won't be better in the short term. So, so you say that um, the world is changing quickly and that we can't assume that it's going to be like the future and that there are barriers to growth everywhere. What do you think of uh, all of the exploration projects happening around the world when you say that cheap oil is gone and probably cheap copper too? Yeah, well, I think most, most everything, the cheap is gone, the cheap mm -hmm. oil, cheap cheap everything. Uh, the easy deposits have been found, in other words. The easy deposits have been mined, and really that goes back 100 years. So things are more expensive now, and the, and the, the wealth that's created in them is, is less as well. Mm -hmm. So a, a barrel of oil today, you know, you might make $30 a barrel. You know, 100 years ago, or 100, sorry, 10 years ago, you might have made $50 a barrel. And so there's that, that wealth is, is, is less, and it's going into the economy in, in, uh, in, in diminished ways as well. And that creates fewer taxes and less investment and so on. So that's all, these are all barriers to growth. And, uh, and from the standpoint of, of, uh, of the metals industry, I think exploration wise, um, there will always be a need for great deposits. There will always be success for exploration. But I think if we reduce our demand, there will be less uh, needed and therefore there will be less of those, fewer of those exploration projects that will be ultimately successful. Mm -hmm. Still will have be a business that investors will be rewarded in, mm -hmm. but maybe not as much as it has in the last, say, 30 or 40 years. Okay, so, the, so there might be uh, fewer mines because, uh, because of less demand, but there's always going to be lots of investors. So where do you think they're going to move their money in the future? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> they're going to invest in the space because there will be great successes. Mm -hmm. And just because we have less growth doesn't mean we have, we have no economy. Mm -hmm. We are still consuming a lot of metals. And the one thing about the metals, uh, the metals industry, just like the oil and gas industry, mm -hmm. You know, you eat your future. In other words, all mines deplete, and that means there's, there's always going to be a market for good exploration success. Always, always, always. Every company depletes without increasing its reserves, developing either through their own exploration or through buying other companies. So there will always be a market for good companies. Fantastic. Well, we'll finish on that note. And so, once again, I'm Scott Tibbles with the Investing News Network, and I've been speaking with Ross Beatty, Chairman of Pan American Silver and Equinox Gold. Thank you so much for joining us, Ross. You're welcome.